Horizon Zero Dawn is an open-world adventure game with mechanical beasts you can shoot with your silly little arrows. I did a blind run, I have some thoughts, so let's get into it. This game may be the first game I've played on this channel with cutscenes that can be up to 5 minutes or so, and so it really put to test my desire to actually pay attention to stories in video games. When I started Zero Dawn, I'm brought right into the story and I got to say, it had my attention. The music was beautiful, there was an air of mystery, the landscape and scenery were immaculate. The introduction of the machines was awe-inspiring and powerful. For the first time in perhaps ever, I was genuinely happy to watch this stunning cutscene play out. I learned the basics of the world and that this guy here is an outcast along with the little girl he is raising, and there's an grumpy old lady and a chill old lady. The cutscene ends and I'm at the main menu where I have to choose the difficulty for my journey. I almost always pick normal as I understand it as being the intended difficulty, but I actually chose hard instead, thinking I would enjoy a little added challenge. From here, the journey continues, but now I'm a young girl who longs to hang out with the other children, but I'm just a filthy outcast, and that gave me so much emotional damage, I jumped down a pit so the pain on the outside matched the pain on the inside. Here I got my first glimpse of the futuristic world that was long since destroyed. It was cool, but the whole time I'm struggling to focus since I run a little funny. I think it's accurate, but I'm so bouncy. <laughs> At the end of it, I find a shiny thing on a rotting corpse, and being a little child, I'm totally unfazed by the face of death and steal the shiny jewelry it was wearing. This tool basically gives me every ability I need to interact with the technology around me. One thing I stumbled upon was a video recording of a dad wishing his son a happy birthday, and there's this little moment that I just find tear-jerking. Darn it game, I actually felt that. My dad or surrogate father or whatever he is finds me and takes me away and what the heck, that's a big rat. He tries to take away my toy but I ain't having it and I guess this whole experience made my dad think it's time for me to learn to hunt. Okay, sure, but five minutes more dad, I'm busy playing with my phone. I mean, focus, cause well focus is the, the, the name of the thing. <laughs> but when he does finally bring me along, he's moving so Gosh darn slow. Faster, daddy, faster. Come on, daddy, you're going so slow. Old man. <laughs> Come on, daddy, let's go. Oh, pretty. Here, Rost, the dad, teaches me how stealth works, and it's really cool actually fearing this machine here. Down a bit further, these machines we are approaching suddenly scamper away as we approach, which taught me an important lesson. Not all machines are aggressive. Some will run. Why'd you chase them off? <sighs> show you how some machines startle easily if they detect you and run away. Oh, thanks game. <laughs> I helped Ross kill a machine but may have initially misunderstood the task and then I'm given a bow. With it, I get to kill my very first beast and I learned that the focus I have can identify weak points on the machines. Keep firing! I was about to go home and watch my Saturday morning cartoons when this kid we saw earlier screams no! and we find him surrounded by machines. Using my focus, I can read their paths, and and being the disobedient little kid that I am, I rush down to save the guy and immediately die. Oh no, that what you saw me. Dead? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a fun game. Kind of weird how it ended, but I guess that's the end of my journey. <laughs> No worries, with the wonders of quick saves, I rescue the guy and move around a bit because everyone still hates me, and a rock is thrown at my head which leaves me with a choice. Knock the rock from his hands, drop your rock, aim for his head. I know what is right, but I know what is funny more! <laughs> and that's the moment I killed the little child and was thrown into the river for my crimes. Or I guess not. Ross shoots the rock out of the air before I committed first degree homicide. Gosh darn it, I thought I was allowed to make decisions here. Okay, we're out of most of the tutorial stuff, so it's time to get the story cooking. I am now a teenager, or something, and have been training all my life for this thing called the proving where I can learn who I am, because apparently I don't have a mom or dad. It's just about that day of the proving, but I have to first collect some ingredients to make fire arrows. I get to mess around a bit with hunting, and overall it felt pretty good. I never thought I could just run out into the open and take on everything that approached me, but had a healthy fear of every machine. Now these fire arrows have a mysterious purpose that Rost won't tell me about, and that night we head out these gates where something has been causing problems. 
From the sounds of it, either the machines themselves are new or else they are acting funny and I'm out here to kill one myself. Pretty weird of them allowing a killer machine to roam their lands just so an outcast can kill it, but I suppose, why not? The machine itself was a frustrating fight. I'm told to lay down a trap for it, and I do that and use the opportunity to shoot the weak point on the thing's underbelly, but its health bar has hardly gone down at all. And now it knows I I'm here and I have to constantly run away and dodge. That whole trap was almost meaningless. I tried to fire arrows, but for the longest time they did nothing until suddenly there was an explosion. Even after finishing the game, I'm not sure what caused the explosion for any of these beasts. The battle itself also took quite a long time. It wasn't bad, I guess, but the whole time I felt as though I was shooting a brick wall and just hoping something would happen. Story-wise, Ross did this because he wants me to feel like a part of the tribe that has hated me since birth and it would seem the reason for that is because he's going to be abandoning me after the proving since after the proving I should theoretically be recognized as a part of the tribe and once I'm part of the tribe I can't talk with outcasts like my dad. I still don't totally get it. I get inside the village for the first time in my life and I quite enjoy the atmosphere. The guy I saved when I was a child is there and he gives me some armor. I don't care much about this guy, he has less muscle mass than me. But this brings me to an interesting scene. Apparently, the Karja and the Nora were once enemies, but have been at peace for two years. But just now, the Karja are trying to fix that broken relationship. The first guy is booed off stage and this other guy takes his place. He explains how the Karja were indeed evil, but now they have a totally good king and they're totally good guys now. Speech is interrupted by me running into this guy who has the same accessory that I do. He's kind of suspicious and right after doing something quite unusual, the Karja guy joins us so the guy I was talking to suddenly dismisses himself and the Karja guy talks about my focus in an almost ominous tone. Since when did those become fashionable? Oh yeah, the Karja are definitely evil and this guy is full of it. The other dude must be a hired hand who knows what's going to happen but is afraid or something. Later, I try fishing out more information from him, but he's dodging the questions and I have to sleep. So I went to a cabin where I get bullied by a hilariously stereotypical sociopath bully. So this is how it's going to be with you, is it? It was quite contrived, really. The next morning, I'm brought to the proving and all the other kids immediately pull out bows and shoot the approaching deer. It's at this point I realize I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing, so I guess I'll just shoot at them too. I take down several deer, figuring this was actually a random ambush and not the proving itself, only to loot one of the bodies and get played to the cutscene. Oh, apparently I was supposed to loot them. <laughs> okay. I'm now way behind and have to catch up, so I take a path that is apparently super dangerous. It wasn't dangerous. Even if you were to do this in real life, there's plenty of parkour people who could do this. Come on, game! I end up winning and am about to be accepted into society when- ah! Oh no! Who could have seen this coming? Actually, I thought they would attack after the proving, but no, apparently they're here for child murder. Oh no, oh, now they're- Oh, dang. See, I knew the Karja couldn't be trusted. The guy in the mask must be the one I was talking to earlier. So after mowing down a dozen men on my own, we try to escape when the masked man mows down literally everybody. No! Oh, well, I actually- didn't see that one coming. A few arrows later and Masked Man is down and so are his men. But the Masked Man wasn't the suspicious dude and this random other guy appears and is going to throw me off a cliff when Ross stops him and saves me while getting himself killed. Wow, they are just offing everybody, but who is this random evil dude? Where did he come from? I'm brought into the sacred mountain to recover where I learned that it's not a goddess, it's a door. This isn't a goddess. Aloy! It's a door. Apparently, these people worship a door, and I can't stop saying, it's not a goddess, it's a door. <laughs> I crack up every time. And I guess the journey finally begins for real now. I'm commissioned to go out into the world and figure something out, but the front gate is attacked by this one machine, and this battle was actually kind of annoying. It was intense at first, but... Then it just became me shooting a million arrows into this thing to finally bring it down. There was actually an issue with the recording at this part and some of the proving clips earlier, so this is actually New Game Plus, so it was a lot easier. I have much stronger gear, but when I actually did this the first time, it was a lot worse. I can destroy the weapons it uses, but other than that, I found no discernible weaknesses, and like the Sabertooth, this continued throughout the whole game, but even worse. 
Every time I saw these, I could do nothing but fire every arrow in my quiver into them until they eventually died five minutes later. I honestly don't know how to deal with them. The focus says their weakness is our fire, but it really didn't do a whole lot even when I pumped them full of flames. Oh well, I'm beyond the borders of the tribe now. I learned how to hack machines and use them as mounts, and despite being the one and only person in existence capable of such a feat, not one person ever commented on it other than this one guy who casually remarked on how it was weird. This is kind of an earth-shattering discovery, don't you think? I don't get it, but I did find this giraffe, so I climbed its neck, stuck my spear in it, some machine stuff happened, and that was about it. It wasn't until the second giraffe I found that I discovered that doing this reveals a portion of the map. Now, there was some sort of hunting party sent out here, and I'm trying to find them. And this is when I use the focus to look at different glowing purple things until I'm fed information. This happened several times, and while well, it wasn't interesting any of those times, these investigations are nothing more than pointing the mouse at the glowing objects until I'm told what I need to be told. But these sleuthing skills do bring me to the war party leader who wants to inflict pain upon the people who did this to us. Oh yeah, some good old classic revenge. Let's get those Karja scum who have apparently had the time to set up a base of operation and have machines actively working for them. At first, I thought I was supposed to sneak inside the base and quietly eliminate the enemies. But after failing a few times, I figured I'd just snipe from a distance and that worked out far better. Kind of odd that the game told me stealth when there was a much better option. Now that was some sweet, sweet revenge, but not quite enough. There are more enemies to slaughter. Supply Master Thrawn, out. Thrawn. First a detour to a bandit camp I found along the way. Basically, I killed a bunch of people and got some loot for it. But nothing special. It was kind of fun though. Time to get back to what the heck? Uh, magic loaded deer. Oh, magic loading deer. What is your wisdom? Oh, magic loading deer. What is your wisdom? With the power of the magical floating deer blessing me, I'm off to kill more human scum. There's three more camps to clear, and my allies are there to help me. Get to safety! These camps have more loot, but my inventory is already full and is full no matter what I do. I can't craft enough arrows to clear my inventory, and this was always a thing while playing. My inventory was always full, which made me not want to explore because why would I explore for materials when the main quest line always gave me heaps more than I ever needed? The game also kept giving me this pop-up telling me how to essentially trash stuff and it wouldn't go away for the longest time. Before clearing the final camp, I also discovered my aim isn't always consistent. Another thing I still don't totally get. Sometimes, and by that I mean frequently enough to be a thorn in my side, my arrows just wouldn't go where I was aiming at all. And I experimented with full drawn and partially drawn arrows to see if that would make a difference, but it sure didn't seem to make much of one. And as much as I love being an archer in games, in a game where high levels of precision are necessary to beat enemies, having a random chance to be off target strikes me as an odd choice. At some point, this wasn't as much of a problem anymore. Maybe that's what the handling stat for bows affects. All I know is that it was not really appreciated. All three camps are destroyed, but guess what? There's more revenge to be had. One more camp and me and this other dude are sent off on a stealth mission. Or at least, I think it's supposed to be a stealth mission. At first, I thought I was supposed to sneak around the enemies, but then there was this one jump that was a bit further than I thought it was, and I died. And then the next time, I just killed all the bad guys without even attempting stealth. Game, is stealth an option or not? Well, it would seem that it's more or less necessary for this next part, where I quietly kill a path of enemies until I can explode some barrels, at which point a battle breaks out. And this battle was hectic. There was a new machine variant I hadn't fought before, and if I focused on the machines, the human enemies would kill me, and if I focused on the humans, the machines would kill me. It was all a big mess where I found myself careening across the battlefield, shooting what arrows I could at the machines, and clearing out what humans I found along the path until victory was secured. Time for more walking simulator. A few things happened here, but none of them were important or interesting other than this new robot who cheats by having a shield active 90% of the time, preventing me from hitting the weak spots, and when I can hit them, I do basically zero damage. Guess there's no point in fighting these. Even if I did kill it, I'd go through my entire inventory before I took it down. Along the road, I also took a closer look at my inventory and noticed that there was a uh, 
crafting option at the top of the menu. And here I was able to upgrade things like my inventory and arrow capacity. Well, this is super helpful. Wish I had known it sooner. The increased inventory was nice, though I still always had a full one. Some of the upgrades were also locked behind parts harvested from passive mobs, and there's no good way of finding those unless you roam around aimlessly, so I killed them when I could, but my inventory was always full, and I never got the ones I needed when I needed them. I come to these gates where I have to kill more machines, and once again, the scorpion-looking ones take absolutely forever to kill. Once I did kill them, though, I was brought into Karja lands. Wait a minute. Why am I here again? Isn't Karja our enemy? Maybe we we're going to talk to them about the rogues who attacked us? This place also had a merchant who is the first clear indicator I've found that there are side quests in this game. What's a trade route without trade? It's just a route. <laughs> that bad joke was scary, but the big bird a short distance away was much scarier. I approached this thing with great caution and scanned it carefully to figure out what its weaknesses were, at which point I figured I'd go on a hunt. Oh, that was a mistake. Or was it? Yep, that was a mistake. Okay. Avoid big bird. Perhaps these bison machines will be easier to take down. You know, I take some pot shots at them and do actual damage, so that's promising. But they run out of range, which is quite rude for them to do. Abandoning ship, I found some NPCs attacking the bird, the poor fools. But thinking about dying to the bird, I just realized one of my bows is missing. I had purchased a new one right before fighting the bird before, and apparently after I died, I lost the bow. It seems that the game doesn't just reset you at a spawn point, but actually resets the game itself, meaning that if I purchase something and then die, I'll have to go and purchase it again. That strikes me as odd. I don't think I've encountered a game, much less an open world one, that did something like this. Oops, a big bird saw me while I was figuring that out. Does it know I'm here or not? Will it flee? Finally. Dang it. Goodness, there's just no, no possibility of even trying to kill the thing. I hate these birds. Moving on, I fight some crocodiles and climb my second giraffe, which is the one where I learned, um, there is indeed a map in this game. <laughs> I also come across a side quest I actually decided to engage with. Stay low, girl. Oh wow, super cool! It gives me a quest to clear out a bandit camp! I think I'm going to try and kill this super cool looking beast first. I fought it for two minutes and did no damage once again. I feel like I have to be missing something. I keep running into machines that I cannot hurt no matter what I do, even when I take advantage of their supposed weaknesses. At least humans are simple enough to kill, um, so I invaded the bandit camp where I legitimately just discovered how to do a melee attack. I've been struggling forever to figure out how to do a melee attack and now I just learned it's um, attack button just uh, without aiming. Oh, <laughs> let's go to Meridian, the city of the sun. Invincible Turkey. <laughs> They're about to not let me in when the evil man himself makes his appearance. Hey, you're alive. I thought you were dead. Make way, make way. You hear that ever so slight hesitation? Clearly he's evil. Clearly he assumed I was dead because he was trying to kill me. But then Aloy, my character, actually trusts him. And then Aaron, this guy, speaks against revenge for his sister who has apparently been killed wait game are you trying to tell me he's actually a good guy you're responsible for the murder it no it's you it's definitely you i could end this right now <laughs> i really wanted to let that arrow fly and take him out but instead i investigated the house of the weird guy from the proving who also wore a focus right now i'm supposed to believe He's the evil mastermind, but no chance of that. Don't you lie to me, game. Wait a minute. She's not going to single-handedly put your kid... In. Okay, forget about the lying Olin. Nobody her size, nobody of any size could push that pallet of metal on their own. Do I have super strength or something? Oh, and Olin was under duress, as I suspected. Oh, and also Olin's the name of the guy I'm looking for. This guy. He called himself a friend. That backstabbing cheat. No, stop it, game. He's evil. You can't convince me otherwise. Time to find Olin. Ah, greetings, ill mighty invincible turkey. 
You, good sir, will never be eaten for a Thanksgiving meal. You are too powerful, you great and mighty turkey. That turkey really should be the main character. I'm much more interested in that than the main story, but I guess I'm down for a classic revenge plot. Or at least I was until they found Olin and discovered that the bad guys, the ones who invaded the Proving and slaughtered my people, were a cult. It wasn't the Karja. It was an evil death cult. No, 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 not the, not the cult plotline. No, death cults are always so dumb in stories. I was so ready for a war, but instead everything has devolved into evil people being evil for the sake of being evil with no motivation other than destroying the world. I could have gotten behind a straight evil enemy if it was a proper war, but now they're some sort of sideshow with no moral complexity or ambiguity. They're just faceless monsters I can kill without even thinking, so I did. Uh, I quite honestly checked out of the story after this. I still paid attention, but everything is now so much less interesting. Oh, how I hope the Karja are still involved in this. I killed all the beasts and set Olin free to redeem himself. I never saw him again. But I did find Aaron randomly walking around in the wilderness, but I couldn't interact with him. So I guess he's just here and never mind. I just had to wait for him to reach his waypoint. And now it's time for a mission complete with more point and click investigations and an ambush. Huh, I guess Aaron is a good guy. Oh, I'm still shooting you in the face. Come on game, you set up his evil scheme so perfectly. Was it all one big misdirect? I guess he's just a good guy worried about his sister who I thought was dead, but she's not. So I'll let him figure that out while I stare off into the lovely night sky. I'm also supposed to find this thing to do a thing, but like I said, I checked out of the story at this point, but the game did get my attention by throwing this real big machine in my path. It was terrifying, and there were other enemies to contend with as well, but then I found this really cool box, and from behind it, the Deathbringer couldn't hit me, but I could hit it just fine. Well, it was cool while it lasted. I guess now that they're dead, I can see what's down here. Oh my goodness, it's another not a goddess, it's a door. At the top of the tower, I got some more exposition, teasing the fact that this one guy made machines that, get this, went rogue and started killing the earth, and now they are creating a plan to save the world from destruction. So wait, what's the main plot right now? Am I trying to figure out who my parents are? Am I trying to stop a cult from destroying the world? The Karja exist? Am I uncovering the secrets of the world's past? In the end, these are all tied together, but that wasn't really clear until the end of the story. So this whole time I'm trying to figure out what I'm actually doing and what I'm supposed to like pay attention to. There's also this other guy whose name is Silence, who is apparently interested in the world's history, and now I'm helping him with something. I've got bigger problems to deal with than your crap. Congratulations. Silence sends me to another place, and it's across the entire map, and I ain't walking that. Thank the Lord, there is a fast travel system, but a limited amount of it. I have to get fast travel bags to do fast travel, and I wasn't sure how rare these were, so I avoided using them during the first half of the game. But in the second half, I figured out you could um, purchase them and use them much more often because, well, there's no real reason to travel. This is an open world game, but why? What's the point of exploring this world? I could kill some machines, I can clear a bandit camp, I can collect supplies, but I do all of this quite frequently on the main quest line. There's nothing particularly interesting in the wilds and nothing to be gained. Plus, for major events and battles, the game provides crates with more resources than I could ever need, so it's not like exploring could have helped be more prepared. It's just doing more of the main quest without doing the main quest, and I am really quite confused. It's a lovely world and all, but other than a pretty sight, I have no reason to see what's out there. There's also the issue with machines and how broad their detection range can be, or perhaps the problem is that they are placed so close to the roads, I often had to race across the path to avoid being killed by the machines along my path, but if one did happen to hit me, then I was stuck in a battle with victory being my only escape. And whenever I got into a fight with one machine, slowly but surely, more and more would join in until I've found myself killing 10 or so of them from a battle that originated with just one. I finally made it to the next location where this massive creature's metallic remains cover the mountain and wow, that's terrifying. Glad I don't have to fight that. 
Inside this thing, there are a few enemies, die, as well as a pretty simple puzzle, and I'm not sure at first if the top one is the clue to the right one or the left side of the puzzle, but whatever. Maybe one of the comms here says which it is, but it's easy enough to brute force it. A little further down, there was another room of enemies, and there were enough of them that I retreated until I realized they weren't going past the door into the room, and the AI struggled to understand stairs, so that made the fight easy. The fight afterwards was not so easy, however. There was another one of the Deathbringers, but this time it destroyed the cover I hid behind, so no cheesing for me. I even attempted shooting from the platforms above the arena, but it shot those out from under my feet. This thing was a little obnoxious with how much health it had, but I figured it out eventually. I learned more about Zero Dawn and am off to destroy the cult's focus network, and here I get to do some of the most satisfying stealth yet. Or at least I did, until I got to the last obstacle, at which point I was spotted and was immediately swarmed by machines. The reason for this was that the exit was up these rocks and I thought I would have to climb them, but after searching for a handhold, I learned I couldn't climb it at all. And now that the machines were hunting me, I didn't have time to figure that out because I needed to, you know, survive and slip away, at which point I noticed a rope that led to the place I should be going to. Oh, so I didn't even need to go here. I was just supposed to... Climb that tree. Whoops. <laughs> time for more stealth, but with humans this time. Too close. It really wasn't necessary considering how human enemies are much easier to take down, but I was in a stealthy mood. Why are you looking out at the cliff? What are you looking at? Thing is though, the game had told me this. You see that bridge over the ravine? Yep. Memorize its location. There's a rappel point on the side. That'll be your way out. Find the tall neck and destroy the module on top. So I thought I was supposed to go to the rappel point right away, and that would bring me to the giraffe I was supposed to destroy. Well, I happily jumped off the rappel point only to hit the ground and miraculously survive. I was a bit lost, wondering where the enemy encampment was, only for it to dawn on me that the giraffe wasn't down here at all. I'd have to make the trek all the way back to where it actually was. Oh dear. I had even investigated the room right next to the place I was supposed to push down a tree, but since I misunderstood the instructions, I guess I missed any further direction that had been given. I did finally figure out, destroy the giraffe, and was thrust into one of those typical just run scenes, with enemies always shooting at me. Thing is though, that this whole sequence required climbing at certain points, and whenever I did, I got shot several times. Never was sure how to avoid them, but it only took two tries, so no big deal. Back at Sunfall, I see a gladiator arena. I wonder if that'll be important later. And then I forget how to get off a ledge while climbing. I was genuinely stuck here for at least a solid minute, pressing every key I could think of until I finally found the one that let me down. There is a secret chamber below Sunfall, and I alone am recognized by the door that lets me in. So of course, when I enter, there are cult members already inside. Um, game, why are they here? How'd they get in? Is there any other entrance? I guess there would have to be, because this whole thing ends with the cult leader repelling down a rope from somewhere, tossing a bomb and knocking me unconscious. Ah! Now I'm trapped. Oh look, over the gladiator arena. And wait, why did they put my stuff so close to the cell? Why not just throw it away somewhere? Okay, classic bad guy move right there. Now this is the dude who killed Rost, so I think I'm supposed to hate him, but honestly I didn't care less about him. <laughs> He's just the death cult leader, doing his death cult thing. Maybe they're not quite a death cult, but they might as well be one, and I am genuinely trying to figure out what my goal right now is, but that'll have to wait as I'm thrown into the arena without a weapon, but no worries, I just gotta lead the chonky fellow into the pillar so my conveniently placed weapons can fall for me to destroy it. More machines are sent to kill me, but Deus Ex Machina appears to save the day. Now it's finally time to return home, to open the not a goddess at the door, but I also need to save my people from attacking machines. Or maybe just some of them, since those ones, um, look like a lot of work. But at the top of the mountain is what I thought was a new machine when I saw it, but while making this video I realized I have encountered one of these before and was absolutely murdered by it. At least this time I had allies, though admittedly they didn't do much. If nothing else, they occasionally take the thing's eyes off me and that's quite helpful. This battle was taking a very, very long time as well, until I had a moment to breathe and found this gun on the ground and pumped the beast full of lead, and that just about killed it right then and there. Wow, I have really been underestimating the power of these things. 
At this point, I've also come to the conclusion that I must be missing something when it comes to upgrading my bow. I have been adding things called I have been adding things called coils to upgrade their strength and have been buying new ones, but it seems to me something is off. What with how little damage I can dish out. It's not a goddess at the door scans me and lets me in, and I was about ready to throw my computer out the window if cultists were waiting for me inside, but thankfully, none were. It's silly, but I've just been confused as to how these guys have been getting inside these supposedly closed capsules, and because this thing is considered a god to the people here, when I come out, they start bowing to me, but I, Aloy, ain't having it, and I thought this was a nice character moment. She's been a bit overly sarcastic and demeaning to other people, that I really wasn't liking her, but this was a nice moment. Though to be fair to Aloy, I have been choosing the snarky remarks when given the option, so um... Wait, that makes me the bad character. <laughs> Time to hit the road where I get sidetracked by a giraffe. Frankly speaking, there's not much of a need to reveal most of the map. Actually, on second thought, I think you might have to in order to use campfires for fast travel, but I forget if exploring reveals the map as well. It wasn't a big deal either way. I'm on my way to reveal one last secret from the past, but then again, I've thought that before while exploring other sites, so I, here we go. There's also this part with invisible dog machines in the way, and I wasn't aware these things existed until they attacked me. Really cool idea, but how do I fight them? I don't even think the focus can scan for them while they're invisible, so guess we're going stealth and that works out until I reach a certain point on the mountain where a big bird attacks and I still don't stand a chance against these things, so I flee once again. At the site, I learned that my mom apparently sacrificed herself to seal off some thing to keep Hades, the bad machine, from utterly destroying Gaia, the good machine. There's also some idiot who destroyed all of human history and knowledge and killed all of Zero Dawn's leaders because apparently their knowledge is a disease? I can't stop thinking about the ones who come after us. Those innocents. Those blameless men and, 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 and women. We're gonna give them knowledge? Like it's a gift? They're the cure, and we're gonna give them the disease. Our disease? No. One of the dumbest things I've ever heard, and yet, I totally know people who think like this. <laughs> I'm also given what sounds like the endgame quest. Hades has been resurrected by the cults, or something, and is looking to send a signal to tell the machines of the Earth to destroy the Earth. That is quite terrifying. I should really hurry to stop that from happening. But instead, we've returned to the missing sister storyline? Wait, why am I back here? Isn't there, like, you know, world extinction on the line right now? Guess instead I'll worry about finding some informant who is dead, finding the bandit camp of the people who kidnapped the sister, finding the sister who is giving me some serious Anakin Skywalker, saves his mother vibes because the sister dies moments after we find her, and right after we kill not just the men but the women and the children too. Oh wait, there's some sick loot worth it! Now we know there's some guy plotting something, and upon finding his home, there are some explosives, at which point I decide to push them off a ledge onto the heads of unsuspecting civilians. Doesn't this make me a bad guy? Why are they all so happy with themselves? This just makes us bad people! <laughs> also, this means we've deactivated the bad guy's bombs, but... Oh no, he's broken into the palace and has subdued the king and his guards. Also, who the heck is this guy? He presses a button as if to set off explosives, but nothing happens because we deactivated the bombs. No, it should be a firestorm, not some belt from a charcoal burner. I am really confused right now. Was the explosion supposed to be bigger? It's not like we actually deactivated them, really. We just sent them off early. Assuming we did nothing, the explosion wouldn't have been bigger or even worse. Am I missing something? Time to fight this guy, I think. Uh. Cool gun, but he's also super easy to kill. But he's got an ace up his sleeve. He summons some birds to attack, and the game seems to suggest that I can either run or fight, so of course I fight. I hope you like fighting these things, because there's more in the way. I take them down, and now it would seem the king loves me or something. I want you to stay in Meridian. What? Why? Well, to start with, you kept the city from going up in flames. You're strong, shrewd, uh, capable. I could use someone like you at my side. Well, that was unexpected, but I guess I'm actually interested. Thank you for the offer, but 
I don't think either you or I are ready for that. At least, not yet. What is actually happening right now? Am I misreading this interaction like I misread Aaron being evil? What, what is happening? Oh, and remember the whole stopping the cult thing? Well, it turns out they will be attacking Sunfall to get to the Spire to send out Hades' signal, so that's convenient. Also, the king is stupid, thinking that this much smoke comes from campfires. Campfires, perhaps? I can't marry a man who doesn't know when he's being attacked, Mr. Sun King. The cult also explodes out of this part under the platform we're on, and I'm once again scratching my head. Why are they here? Or there, I guess, specifically? When did they get there? I guess I'll shoot arrows, ask questions later. I did at least enjoy this boss battle, easily the hardest human opponent in the whole game, but I killed him, and by the looks of it, I could have actually let him live. Huh. Now I wonder what would have happened if I had selected that. Oh uh, yes, loot. Sick, sick loot. Ah, oh, yes. Worth. With that fight out of the way, I'm brought to a battle against waves of machines where I'm given this new heavy weapon to use. It was kind of fun mowing down these machines, but also a bit frustrating. Once I had one of these weapons in hand, I couldn't leave the platform, which made me super vulnerable. But it was also the only good way to destroy most of the machines due to their massive health pools and sheer quantity of ones that were attacking. I could throw it down and go to another platform, but usually once I got to the next one, I had to immediately drop the weapon there and move on again. I never quite figured out the proper rhythm for this battle, but it was the closest thing to a power trip I've encountered in the game, and for that reason, it was nice. I'm pushed back, trapped under some rubble, while I watch Hades dragged into the city, and then I have to walk through the fiery remains of the place to where the spire and presumably the final battle will take place. Three people are awaiting my arrival, and Aaron is the only one I've actually talked to consistently throughout the entire game, so I'm unsure why the other two are here, but I'll take the help. I climb up to the final battle, and it's another Deathbringer. This one has some different weapons and summons in more machines, but ultimately, this is basically the same boss fight I've had several times before. So I took it down, stabbed Hades in the face, stopped the evil signal, and saved the day. Well, guess that's it. There are some ending cutscenes where I found my mom, I guess. I still don't know why Aloy considers this person her mom or why the DNA is such a close match. Am I a clone? Am I a daughter created by the machine made from the woman's DNA? I honestly don't know. I must have missed it. And I don't have any time to think about it because I'm a little preoccupied wondering how her body has been in this bench undisturbed for... Oh wait, actually, how many years has it been since the apocalypse? The credits play and I think I'm done, but there's a post credit scene where silence apparently has a device that captures a chunk of Hades that escaped, and apparently there's some masters who initially awoke him. Huh. Okay. Sure, why not? But that's the game. Overall, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. The beginning was a setup to a pretty typical storyline, but one I'm quite fine with, and it made me interested right from the get-go. But when the cult was introduced and the card had turned out to be actually good, I lost interest. And maybe part of that is my own fault for having, I guess, the wrong and impression from what was set up, but I don't think so because I don't really enjoy the death cult storyline in anything. It's kind of a cop-out. The cult leader had even performed their attack in the beginning of the game with the command to kill witnesses, which further led me to think they were Karja, but ultimately it would seem this secrecy was little more than a throwaway line as I still don't know why they were trying to be secretive. What did they need to kill witnesses for? It's not like they did anything, they were just attacking. What, if we don't witness you killing our people, then are we supposed to believe they just died on their own? I must have missed something, but after playing this section twice, I still don't get why. Needless to say, the story was serviceable, but I wish they had gone the root of the carge of being evil, and I had to uncover their secrets and fight them off, or maybe the secret was actually kept and we didn't know who attacked us, and it was the carge all along, oh no, or something like that. Maybe it would have been generic, but it wouldn't have been just Death Cult being Death Cult. The gameplay was overall pretty fun, but as I mentioned before, I'm not sure why it's an open world. I think this game would have benefited from being a much more straightforward narrative game, rather than having long chunks of travel for the sake of travel. Either that or else add more reason to explore. Maybe add bows and armor or special futuristic weapons that can only be found or crafted by exploring. In the end, my only motivation to go off the highlighted path was to hunt for the sake of hunting. But still a solid game. Not sure I'll try the sequel as I've not heard great things about it, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe and if there's any games you think I should try, let me know in the comments below.